Hi guys, I hope you guys are having a great week so far <clears throat> and that everything is making sense and coming together for you. <clears throat> Today's read aloud is Three Hens and a Peacock. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get started. Remember, as we're reading the story, I, guys, I want you guys to be thinking about the different characters, which by looking at the title, I'm thinking that the characters are going to be the hens and the peacock. And we're trying to think about what is their point of view? What are they thinking? How, what are they, how are they feeling about things? Um, now, not only that, I want you to kind of also be thinking about how are they handling the situations or events that are coming up throughout the story? All right, at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about this. So think about it. And then at the end, um, hopefully we'll have some of the same thoughts. Three Hens and a Peacock. Written by Lester Laminick. Things were quiet on the Tucker's farm. The cows chewed their cud. The hens clucked and pecked and laid their egg. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop to buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until... That peacock showed up. The cows and the hens and the old hound kept right on doing what they'd always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Peacocks are very loud if you don't know. Eventually, the peacock wandered down the, to the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped for a closer look. Day after day, <clears throat> more fog, folks stopped to admire the peacock, <clears throat> and they all bought tomatoes and corn, eggs and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. But trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly. He just struts around screaming. That lazy pea up. Oh, I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. So think about their point of view and how they're feeling and what they're thinking. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we do all the work. And now how does the peacock feel? What do you think he's thinking? The peacock had heard every word. For days, he moped about, moaning and groaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Humph, clung to one hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the peacock stay here to be useful while you hens take a, the glamorous job down by the road? Hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan. Yes, it is a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy up our feathers tonight and nothing but our brightest beads, bangles, and bows will stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. Tomorrow, I'll stay here, sit on a nest, and cluck. And we'll get all gussied up, said the hens. We'll be so glamorous. 
And now what is their point of view? What are they thinking and feeling? And we've already heard um, an event that come, came up. So what do they do to solve the event or solve the problem? At sunrise the next morning, the hen strutted down to the road. And the peacock marched right into the hen house and poked his head inside. The hens <clears throat> were shocked when they saw a car flapping, whizzing by. They thought they were going to stop everything, but every car whizzed right on by. The peacock stuck in his tummy and wiggled from left to right to fit through that hen house door. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew and still no cars stopped. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath and pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not lay a single egg, not one. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's that peacock doing in the hen house? asked Farm, Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing down by the road? Not one of them is up there laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. We need that peacock down there stopping cars. When the peacock heard that, he smiled the biggest smile. I am helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth and worked his way out of the hen house and down to the road. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day. We couldn't get one car to stop. It's true. Why, most of them didn't even slow down. The peacock met the hens as they trudged up the road. I can tell you I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One had nodded. I put on my stellar strut and even I couldn't stop a single car, she said. I have to hand it to you, Fancy Feathers. Your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. So the hens marched back to the hen house, the peacock strutted down to the road, and the old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. And things were quiet again at the back of the barn. Uh-oh, looks like there's another coming. The end. So let's talk about point of view real quick. When we are at the beginning of the story, we see everybody seems happy and quiet on the farm. And then when we get a little bit through the story, we hear what the um, hens actually think. And the hens are very upset about the peacock being there because the peacock's getting all of the attention. They don't understand why the peacock's getting attention because they feel like they're doing everything. So their point of view is that the peacock is getting all this attention for nothing and they're upset. And when the peacock overhears this, the peacock gets sad. And we know that because in the story it says that he moped around 
for days, moaning and groaning, moped about. And when we mope around, that means that we're upset and we're sad. So we know that he's sad and upset because he feels like he, everyone thinks he's useless. Okay. So now the problem is that the hens are upset with the peacock and the peacock feels useless because he doesn't do as much as anybody else. So how do they handle the situation? How do they handle these events? They trade places for a day to see if they can each do each other's job. The peacock thinks that he'll be more useful if he's laying eggs and the hens feel like they'll get more attention if they're by the road stopping cars. But did it work? What they all realized is that everyone is meant for a job and sometimes just because someone's job seems more glamorous or more eventful or useful doesn't mean that it is. Everybody has a job in its place. And we also can learn this because, and here we talk about how they need to sell the eggs. Well, without the hens, they don't have eggs. So the, the hens are important in getting their attention and they just don't realize it. And the peacock felt like he was useless, but here the farmer says that we need those peacocks down by the, the peacock down by the road to stop the cars. So this lets us know and lets the peacock know that they're both useful in the same way or in the, the same amount, just for different reasons. I hope this helped explain a little bit more about um, the point of view of different characters in the story and how they solved their problems. Now let's do our summarizing, our somebody wanted but so then. Um, we're going to start with the hens. Somebody, the hens, wanted to get more attention or feel like they were um, appreciated. So they traded spots with the peacock. Um, but they realized that that wasn't the greatest job for them. So they switched back and then realized that they were good and useful in their job and that they were being appreciated, just not in the way that they realized. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.